Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, we are taking a look at the Lampadaddy Casco. This is one of my favorite sports classics in Grand Theft Auto Online. The vehicle is fast, it sounds absolutely amazing, and I mean, just look at this car. It looks stunning. There's not many vehicles in the game that look like this, and because of that, I love it. In real life, if I'm not mistaken, this is based off a Maserati 3500 GT, which is kind of crazy. When it comes to customization, there's not too much going for this car. You obviously have the normal things like brakes, suspension, engine tunes. That's about it. I mean, you've got some cool paint jobs. I mean, I think this vehicle looks in any color, really. I don't think there's any colors the car looks bad in, and that's very crazy. There's not a lot of vehicles in GTA where you can pick any paint job and it looks great, but this car, well, maybe not pink, but I think the Casco looks great in almost any color you give it, which is kind of crazy. The Casco just has so much going for it in that regard, but it doesn't even have a spoiler option. So if you're looking for customization, the Casco is not the way to go. The reason we're talking about the vehicle today is because of the fact you can get your hands on it for free if you participate in the LS car meet for the prize ride. It is a bit of a challenging vehicle to get your hands on. You're going to have to finish first place three days in a row. Why is it so hard to get your hands on the Casco? Honestly, I'm not too sure because this isn't that special of a car. I mean, yeah, it's a very fun vehicle to drive and it's pretty cool to mess around with, but at the same time... I don't know. I mean, the Casco is not the fastest. It goes 120 miles per hour. It's very old, features very little customization. I'm not really sure why Rockstar made this such a hard vehicle to get your hands on. Now, there is actually a base price and a trade price for this vehicle. All the way back on the Prison Break and the rest of the major heists like the Humane Labs and Pacific Standard were added into the game, this was one of the major reward vehicles. And essentially, if you completed the station mission for the Prison Break, you would unlock the trade price for this vehicle. In fact, you can't even find the Casco unless you complete this mission. And I think that's the major reason why this vehicle is pretty expensive or at least hard to get in the prize ride is because if you have not completed the heist setups, you are actually not able to purchase this car, which is kind of crazy. So yeah, my advice is definitely if you want to get your hands on the Casco and you're a newer player and you haven't done the heists, this is one of the best ways to do so. Plus, you're going to increase your LS Carmi reputation. But if you have the opportunity to buy this car, it's only $900,000, $600,000 if you have the trade price. It's really just not that expensive. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, j I personally would recommend just to purchase it for the six hundred to 900000 depending on if you have the trade price or not. But here we are testing the lap time capabilities this vehicle has. I have no clue how good it's going to do. I don't even have a stopwatch set. I'm going to have to set it after we are uh, done, you know, doing the lap here. So let's roll around. So far, pretty good on handling. I mean, I haven't noticed a problem with grip, but it is a rear-wheel drive sports classic. So you will have to be a little careful. You can see there are good examples. Example, it did have a bit of a oversteer, but not too much of a problem. Let's stay in the center of the road. That way we don't crash into any cars and we're making our way to the uphill portion. There's no way that car turned into me. There's actually no way that car turned into me. Man, I'm still kind of molding about that car just driving into us, but that's okay. We're going to try it again. Full speed ahead. I think the Casco will do all right. Uh, if you want my opinion on the lap time, I don't think it's going to be anything crazy, but I'm going to guess around 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Now, the average sports car is 2 minutes and 30, so if we can get anything close to 2.30, that'll actually be pretty dang good. What is up with these cars just, like, driving all over the place today? I mean, I guess that's what you do with a car. You drive it, but still, you get my point. All right, let's slow down a little bit. Now, the Casco actually has pretty good handling. The problem is it just doesn't turn very well, but, like... For a rear-wheel drive car, it has no issues with actually grip or anything in that area. It's just that it doesn't turn great, so you will have to apply the brakes quite a bit in certain situations. But as we can see, I've already made it no issues whatsoever to the uphill portion, and hopefully this time, no cars will uh, drive into me. Now, this corner here is usually a dangerous one, but as you'll notice, no problem for the Casco here. Then we're going to hug this corner. Do have a vehicle in front of us, but there's no oncoming traffic, so we're all good. All right, well, so far, this is seeming to be a very, very solid lap. I just opened my mouth, and then our car almost spun out. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the downside of a rear-wheel drive car, is you're obviously going to run into situations where you might just spin out, but we're on the downhill section now. This is where handling is key, and uh, yeah, it might be a little bit tricky for this portion. We can see here, we are able to slow down our car a little bit by doing a handbrake turn, but it's not ideal because you are losing speed for friction, and obviously friction is always a loss in energy, which is not exactly what you want. There you go, pretty good corner there. Let's hug this one as tight as possible. Okay, not bad. I'm just lightly feathering the brakes as much as I can, but uh, it, it is definitely a bit painful. There you go. Okay, roll around this corner here. Nice, all right, not too bad. I don't know exactly how long we're going, so I guess we're gonna find out, but here we go, roll around you. Smash into that sign, but that doesn't really matter too much. All right, so there you go. We're on the home stretch. Not too many issues. Definitely a little bit sussler here and there rolling around the corner, but nothing that I can't handle. Seems like we are already up to our top speed as well, which is a buck 20, so no real problems overall. Hopefully no cars turn into us. Nope, we're all good. That car was turning, but uh, seems like we are in the clear. All right, let's roll around this corner here. Oof, get around that vehicle. I didn't know if that car was turning or not. It's always hard to tell whether the NPCs are turning, but we are done. Honestly, I don't think I could have been much closer on my guess. That was two minutes and 43 seconds, which is not bad. I mean, I expect sports classics to be a bit slower than sports cars, so this did finish a bit worse, but not that big of a deal. Personally, I really like the Casco. It's one of my favorite OG cars in the game. It's got decent top speed, pretty good acceleration, and okay handling. I'm definitely not going to praise the car on its overall maneuverability, though, because it's all right. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. But in terms of looks, as I said, personally, this vehicle is incredible, and I would easily rate it as one of my favorite looking cars in the game. Solid 10 out of 10. Do I think it's worth your time to get on the prize ride this week? Really depends on if you like sports classics or not. If you're a big fan of this vehicle and you have the time to put in, then sure, it's a decent car. But at the same time, I think it's a lot easier just to purchase this vehicle rather than slaving away at trying to get first place three separate days. That's obviously my personal opinion. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on getting this car or you stay very far away from it. Make sure to click that subscribe button down below if you enjoy this content, especially if you'd like to see more like it. And uh, yeah, See you in the next one. Bye-bye.